Good morning, everyone. We're starting off the day with a fantastic view down into the canyon here. This place is called Burr Point, this viewpoint. And we're looking down into the canyon of the Dirty Devil River. The river is down in here. And today we're heading down into the canyon. I camped in this area last night. I camped just a mile away from here along the rim of the canyon. Great views, beautiful spot. Even if you don't do what I'm doing today, the hike that I'm doing, you should come out here. The, the road out to this spot that ends right here. This is like the, the first spot you get to once the road ends. This road is, is good. Any vehicle can make it if conditions are dry. So highly recommended. And I have a little bit of driving to do, just a, a couple of minutes further south along the edge of the canyon here. All right, found a great place to park here. Got nice views of the mountains. I'm in full sun, so the solar panel can be charging the battery and keeping the fridge running. And you can see what's left of an old road here. I'm gonna follow that down this way for a little bit. It's a beautiful morning today, beautiful blue skies, just a little bit of wind, not too much. And it's about 55 degrees right now. The high today should be about 80, so we're looking at pretty perfect conditions for the adventure. And uh, I think it's about six miles each way. So we're gonna get a fair number of steps under the belt today. And I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of fun. I'm leaving the road now and turning left onto what is still another path. Looks like a, a much lesser used track, but you can still see it behind me here. There are really four, uh, four highlights of this, this hike, or four kind of pillars that I want to see. And we haven't gotten to the first one yet, so we still have a little bit of walking to do, and then I'll show you why exactly I have a rope and a helmet on my backpack here. Check this out, look at all of these moky marbles on the ground. These aren't like super nice ones in the sense that they don't have like a perfect kind of dark varnish on them like some of them do, but still really nice examples. Really cool. Okay, so about an hour and about two miles into the hike here, I've reached, I've almost reached the first real highlight of today's adventure. But let me show you the view here first. I'm at the edge of a cliff. I'm at the top of a cliff here. And this cliff band goes basically all along the edge of the valley. You can see it continuing on over in that direction. And down here we can finally see, we can finally have a, a good look at the river. This is the Dirty Devil River. Looks like it's living up to its name. It looks very dirty. That is not a crystal clear stream by any means. Some beautiful rock formations, more rugged canyon country all around. We have a, an airstrip, a little backcountry airstrip right there in the middle on top of that little flat spot. And then more cliffs all around here. And so I'm going down. The, again, the goal today is to get down to the river. But this cliff band basically prevents that anywhere nearby, except for this right here. So if we zoom in, I don't know if you, if you can see this. There is a boulder here with some webbing around it. And then down here, there's a rope, there's a hand line. You can see it against the white rock right in the center there. 
that is where I'm headed. So I think I can just scramble down this last little steep part to the top of the of the rappel or of the the hand line. I'm not sure yet how we're going to negotiate it, but let's negotiate this first. Okay, well, slight change of plans here. So I need to get down this section in order to get down to the top of the rappel and the top of that, that rope down there. And I could do it if my life depended on it. It's, it's probably, oh, I don't know, 15 feet high. But the consequences of a fall aren't great. Like, there are lots of <laughs> hard rocks down here. Then you could tumble off either side over here. So as long as I have the rope, I think I'm going to rig up an anchor either somewhere over here, or I, I saw a great natural anchor over there, and, uh, and rappel down this in order to get down to the top of that. Okay, so we have this long piece of webbing that uh, I kind of threw back around this this natural, it's like a mini natural arch here. It's like a, a natural tunnel. And so I threaded the webbing through there, tied a knot, tied my rope into it. And now I have the, the rest of the rope kind of around my shoulders here. Let's go toss it off over here. Got my harness on, got the grigri on the rope, gonna rappel down the, the single strand here. I'm gonna have to untangle the bundle of rope that's down there somewhere, but uh, shouldn't be too hard. I've got the GoPro rolling here and I have my 360 camera on a long pole sticking out of my backpack. Let's see if we get any usable footage here. The first step is always the worst, always the most nerve wracking. As far as repels go, you know, these aren't crazy repels, but still repelling requires concentration. Okay. Okay, now it'll be smooth. Smooth sailing here. as I get a shower of little rocks and sand on my helmet. Okay, first step, not a problem. And again, if I needed to, I can climb back up that on the way out here, but hopefully, whoa, no one comes along and steals my rope or anything. Now we have a little intermediate step. Not a problem. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Rope is there. I left my rope in place there and I'm I'm at the, uh, the fixed rope here. The anchor looks pretty solid there. The webbing looks like it's in good condition. This rope here looks like it's in good condition. And so I've clipped into it. Uh, there, are, there are knots about every four or five feet in the rope. And so I've clipped in to the topmost loop here, topmost knot here. And uh, I'm gonna clip in 
every so often. So I'll clip into the next one or the one below that. And then that way I'll, I'll always be connected with at least one of these to this rope as I kind of hand over hand it down the cliff here. That was a little bit strenuous. There are, I don't know if you can tell, some like shallowly carved moki steps, just barely carved into the rock here. They're not really deep enough to be that effective. And so I was basically just hand over handing it down the rope. And so, whew, I'm tired, but we've made it from here on out. It's, uh, it's regular hiking, I think. I hope. I've taken off all my gear and I'm just gonna stash it underneath some boulders here. I don't wanna carry it for the rest of the hike. I'm not gonna need it until I come back here. Let me show you what's on the cliff up here next to, next to the rope. The rope is right here. I came down this way. Let me show you this little cliff here. It's not much, but there are some old minor signatures, minor inscriptions in here. There's one here that says Larry Shumway, I think. Another one that says JB. This says 32054, I think. So that'd be 1954. Another one over here. GR Whitby. And another date, this looks like 253 early 50s, beginning of the atomic age, beginning of the Cold War. Uh, that's the reason that there was a lot of uranium mining in this area. So I'm going to leave the cliffs behind and now I'm going to leave the rope behind. I don't know if you can see the rope in the corner there. I'm going to leave this all behind, hike down, going to head down the slope. And then I think the route goes along this, this horizontal bench here, kind of above the river. But I will be crossing the river down over here somewhere and then heading off in this direction. So let's do that. Tired. I've been going for a while now. Oh, it's time for a break. I left the bottom of the rope over there about an hour and 40 minutes ago. So I've been just walking along this bench above the river for almost two hours. The going hasn't been too difficult or too tricky. Like it's been pretty obvious. Uh, there's a, a faint path for most of the way. And uh, I've stopped at this particular spot for a a reason, I don't know if you've picked up on it, but I'm sitting here on a petrified tree stump. And behind me, this is a petrified log laying down. And there are a bunch of other pieces around here. Let me show you. I said before that there were four highlights or four things on this little adventure that I was looking forward to. This is the second one. You can see this is the, the big petrified log I was sitting on. And then uh, here's another piece, and then here's the, the longer 
log. I mean, it really does look like a tree. These are a few of the, the larger pieces in this area. Just spectacular. That is a tree if I've ever seen one. You can see the, the rings on the top there. You can see the, the bark on the side here. And then more over here. These are a couple feet across. Just big piles of wood. And so again, for the last couple hours, I've been making my way just kind of along this way and I can see where I came down. I think those rappels are at the top of this little triangle, this little point here. So I came down over this way and I've been walking along the bench and now the, the path goes around the corner here. This, this cliff that's been above me this, this whole time, it's ending here as the as we make a, a bend around this way then we're going to head down to the river on the other side and looking at my stats here it looks like i've been going for three hours 47 minutes and i've covered 5.33 miles i've gained 310 feet and lost 1300 feet of elevation we still have quite a bit to go Got my first good look at the river now. I'm heading down to here. I'm gonna go down, cross the river here, somewhere around here. You can kind of see a, a trail along this way, I think. And then I'm gonna head into the mouth of this other canyon. The main Dirty Devil River comes in over here and continues on in this direction. This is a side canyon. And again, that is where I'm headed. I'm almost down to the river now. I think I can follow the trail down this way. And I just realized, I looked over into the canyon that I'm heading into and there's another guy walking into the canyon also. So I'm sure I'll see him at some point in there. But first, Let's get down to the river. There is another way to get to where I'm going and I'm guessing that guy took that other route. That way involves much more driving and it's a, it's a far worse road, but it's a shorter hike and there's no rappelling involved. But where's the fun in that? Well, I made it to the river. It, uh, it's cool, but it's not too, too cold yet. And it doesn't seem too high either. So shouldn't be too bad to cross. This, by the way, was highlight number three. I've been looking forward to getting down to the river and crossing it. Wish me luck. Whoa. I'm out in the middle now and I think this is about where it would be deepest and it's up just underneath my kneecap here. And it was like that just for a little bit and now it's, it's shallower again already. Well, that wasn't too bad. Uh, it was actually pretty refreshing. It's a warm day and uh, again, the river was nice and cool, but not too cold. Not like so cold that you you know, it takes your breath away. There is some mud and muck Whoa. here along the bank to contend with, but it shouldn't be too bad. And uh, again, the water wasn't deep enough to even go above my knee and, and get my rolled up pants wet. So that's nice. Whew. Onward and upward into the canyon. Welcome to highlight number four. This is the destination of the day. You know, they say that it's the journey and not the destination that counts. I think that today it's both. That journey was incredible. And I can tell already that this is incredible. 
So this is called Happy Canyon, this canyon that flows into the Dirty Devil River. And I'm at the start of what are called the Happy Canyon Narrows. And this isn't like a slot canyon. It's not so close that you can touch both sides most of the time, but like the Narrows in Zion National Park, if you've been there or, or heard of those, it's just a very steep-sided, dramatic, winding, twisting, natural passageway through the rock here. And so, uh, and it goes for long, like it goes for, for a long time, like a mile or something like that, these Narrows do. So let's get started. Let's enjoy the Happy Canyon Narrows. There's a log stuck up here in the canyon in the slot about 20 feet above my, above my head here. And so when this place is full of water, that's how high it gets. Logs are brought down, down canyon. Look at that, isn't that spectacular? They're brought down this way and get lodged in the twists and turns. Well, I think this is the end of the line for me. There is this little pothole here that, frankly, I could just walk through uh, and I could probably jump and make it over the side, but I think this is a good spot to turn around. The really, really impressive Narrows lasted for 15 or 20 minutes. Just stunning, just really, really breathtaking scenery. The texture, I mean, you can see it on the, on the walls here too, the, the striations, the lines of the sandstone here, and just the waves and the curves and the, the you know, the, the chalk stones, the, the boulders stuck in the canyon and the, the pieces of wood, the logs stuck above the canyon. Just, what a place. <laughs> what an amazing, amazing place. What a fun, adventure and now I get to repeat it. Well, I, I have to repeat everything, of course, but I feel like I get to repeat this, this narrow section. Uh, this isn't a loop hike, this is an out and back, so I'm gonna enjoy the, uh, the narrows again here. To give you some stats, let me pull out my phone here. I've gone 8.8 .8 miles. That's longer than I thought it was. I thought it was about six miles each way, but uh, it's nearly nine. And it's taken me five and a half hours to get to this point. Wow, totally worth it. I mean, if you could drive to this place, it would be, there would be a parking lot, there would be lines of people coming in through here. Uh, I did pass the guy that I saw earlier. He started where I did. He started at, at Burr Point and he camped there. Uh, he camped down here somewhere last night. So apart from that, I think that if you were to come here on most days, you wouldn't see another person. I think it's, it's fairly obscure and even with one, two, three, four, half a dozen other people. There's enough room for everyone out here. I mean, it's a spectacular, I don't know how many times I've said that in this video, but it's a spectacular place. What a cool adventure. I'm gonna retrace my steps back to the rope and I'm not gonna film between here and there. I'm just gonna enjoy it, listen to an audiobook, maybe. Uh, but I'll start filming again once I get to the rope. So I'll see you guys in a few hours. All right, everyone, it's about three and a half hours later and I'm tired, I've been going slow. I mean, there's much more uphill on the way up to the top of the canyon rim, obviously, than there was going down, but still enjoying the view and uh, I'm at the rope here. And uh, the fact that there are knots in this, so I think these are butterfly knots, by the way, the fact that these are in here make it harder to climb up uh, with, you know, this method. So this is called an ascender. And the idea is basically that you clip it onto the rope 
and it can slide up, but doesn't slide down unless you pull this, this lever and this cam back. So I'm going to do that and uh, climb up the rope here. Uh, and then I have a, a sling tied onto it so I can use it as a as kind of a stirrup. And I don't know how much of this you can see in the GoPro. I know this is kind of close quarters here, but we're doing our best. After a point, it's easier to just climb up the thing, hand over hand. <sighs> okay. That was exhausting. Probably because I'm exhausted. I read, by the way, I think I read this, that this rappel was actually used by the miners back in the day. And I think they're the ones that carved the, the shallow steps into the side there, the, the, the little Moki steps, and this would have been some sort of anchor also. Maybe for a ladder or, or a winch, or maybe they did just rappel down, I don't know, but... Okay, mission accomplished, made it to the top of this fixed rope, this blue rope. And I can see my rope still up there, so let's scramble up there and finish this off. Okay, success. Whew. Okay guys, I'm gonna pull up the rope, dismantle the anchor here, walk the 45 minutes or so, hour, back to the car. And I'll see you there. Well guys, <laughs> I made it and I feel just destroyed. I am exhausted. I didn't get a ton of sleep last night, and I only got like four hours of sleep the night before. And so there's just like tiredness from not getting enough sleep. And then there's the tiredness from hiking for 11 hours and like 18 miles with like 3,000 feet of elevation gain. It's, I think it was just under 3,000 feet of elevation gain and loss, you know, going down and then back up. <sighs> And on top of that, I didn't bring enough water. And so I was very thirsty and I was rationing my water to make sure I had enough. And, uh, you know, that made me feel even more tired. And this water, this can here, sparkling water, is the, I think, fourth that I've had since getting back to my car. I've just been chugging and I feel much better now, but man, rough day. <laughs> Yeah, but a uh, spectacular campsite here. I'm in the same kind of general area as the trailhead and kind of where I camped last night too, but you know, a handful of miles away. And uh, this canyon here, actually, let me show you, let me show you around. There's the actual campsite right there. Great views from the back window. And then uh, of course we have the, the Henry Mountains once again, and then great views of this canyon out here. So this canyon uh, is Poison Springs Canyon or Poison Spring Canyon, I think it's called. You might remember that I mentioned earlier that uh, there was another way to get to the Slot Canyon or to the Narrows today. And that involves driving a really bad road apparently in this canyon over here. And then so you're, you drive the canyon and then uh, apparently like a giant boulder is blocking the road, so you have to park there and then hike a handful of miles over to the Happy Canyon Narrows. But apparently that road really is like a Jeep road. You couldn't drive it in uh, like in a Subaru or in, the, I couldn't have done it in the Route 4. I probably could have done it in the Land Cruiser, but uh, the, the Miner's Rappel, which that, that route is called, or at least that section of the route that I did is called, uh, that seemed more interesting, more fun to me. And it was, it was great. I had a great time today, uh, despite the, the 
effort involved and despite the dehydration. I'm feeling great now. All is well that ends well. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your favorite part was. Let me know if you have any questions. And I'll see you in the next one. Be sure to check out Adventure Know How, my new site, where you can gain access to a map of all of my free campsites, plus monthly bonus videos that you won't find anywhere else. Learn more at adventureknowhow.com. And for links to everything else SUV RVing related, visit suvrving.com. Links to these sites and more will be in the video description.